Hello everyone and welcome back to a new Planet Zoo tour. And today is a very special one because today we are going to take a look at the very first Zoofluencer Community Zoo. So before I start the actual tour, I just quickly want to explain uh, something about this project. So this project was made by 14 different people uh, over on the Discord channel. If you're not in the Discord channel, make sure you do. And uh, there's a link down in the description. But what we did is first I created this beautiful entrance area. And after that, I basically divided the entire map into 14 different areas, as you can see. So all 14 people were assigned a area and three different animals. They could choose which animal they wanted to put in. They basically could put in any animal they want, but they had to pick one of those three animals as well. So... We had to make sure that there weren't like 14 different polar bear habitats in this zoo in the end. And we also wanted to make sure that the actual zoo in the end would look like a finished project. Instead of someone starting building right over there and then the next one started building over there. And uh, yeah, that's just something that we didn't want. So after dividing everything and building the entrance area, as you can see, this is a uh, little recreation of if you if you look google planets or zoo entrance you will find an image of this one it's a it's a little recreation if you like it uh then let me know i can upload it to like an empty zoo file you can start your own zoo in this map um but yeah, if you like it i will upload it to uh, the workshop so that was a little quick explanation of this project so without further ado let's jump into the actual tour and welcome everyone to the final version of the zoofluencer community zoo as you can see, it, uh, it changed a lot and it actually looks like a finished zoo. So I'm, uh, I'm really happy with the result. There are some uh, really, really good builds in here. Um, so yeah, let's just start the tour from the very beginning uh, over here. We, of course, we still have the, uh, the entrance area. And this was supposed to be area number one. But this one was assigned to someone that uh, yeah, decided to abandon the project itself. And uh, we changed it to a little monorail station over here. So now we have a monorail that goes around the zoo. As you can see, there were supposed to be two. But I decided to, <laughs> to delete one because I couldn't fit two stations in here. I'm sorry about that. But uh, yeah, it, uh, it didn't change much, to be honest. But then we start with area number two. Area number two was done by Citroen Vert. And that's a name you might remember because we already did two different tours on the channel, uh, which were zoos by Citroen Vert. They always create wonderful things. So uh, yeah, this one isn't a exception, of course. I got a little description from everyone and uh, just a little yeah, explanation of what they'd done why they built it and where it was inspired by so i actually know what the thoughts were while building and in the description it says this habitat was inspired by the pattern that is actually on the giraffe so this is a giraffe habitat as you can see there's a little giraffe over there and uh, there's another one over here and the building and um the walls on the side is all inspired by the pattern of the actual giraffe. I really like this. It's really cool. The building itself is just incredibly well done. And um, yeah, the glass, the plaster, it's, it has such a great pattern on it. And I have no clue how they created it, but it really looks good. So uh, yeah, well done. Well done. Also, there are not only giraffe in this habitat, there are also some uh, sable antelope running around over here. It's always good if you have like an African animal. You can combine them with a lot of them. Um, you can basically put like six, seven different species into one habitat and they are still okay with that. So that's all good. Um, this is also part of area number two. There's a little um, place, the recticulate place. I think there's a little viewing area and a coffee and a juice shop. Ah, as you can see, this is a this is a cool little viewing window over here. That's nice. That's nice. What I really like about this area is that everything is like in the same pattern and the same pieces were used. So it really comes together. I love the little foliage here. Again, this uh, this really reminds me of the uh, of the Icelandic zoo. 
that Citroen Vert created. If you haven't seen that one, make sure you check it out. Uh, but yeah, the foliage work on that one is really well done. And um, oh, these little, I think, yes, these little education screens, they are also from that uh, same zoo. This is also a font that was created by Citroen Vert. Yeah, yeah I, I recognize some stuff in here. Of course, the area was quite big, so uh, yeah, the, she decided to uh, make two habitats in this one. So there's another one, the ostrich and the common warthog. And uh, same little shelter building, but this time it's a little bit smaller. Let's go inside. That looks cool. Oh, it has two doors. There is a warthog sleeping here. It looks nice. I like it. The monorail going right through it. And there's actually a little backdoor area here as well. I can see that one. This is the staff path thing. And I guess this is just some... Uh, what would it be? Staff room maybe? Yeah, there's a keeper hut over here. And there's a large staff room here. That's cool. That's nice to implement that right away in your zoo. So basically this is enough for this entire area probably. But yeah, I really like this one. A good start of this uh, project I would say. And let's continue with uh, the second one. And the next area was done by our wonderful moderator, Fenorial. I think I pronounced that perfectly. Um, so in this habitat, we will have reindeer and also half of the polar bear habitat. What I really like about this one is that they work together. So there's another area right over here. And they created a little bridge. I had to make some adjustments. It wasn't working anymore, but I made sure that the transversible area was still okay over here. The polar bears can cross this bridge, so you will have a perfect view on the animals. And this is basically a combined uh, habitat for them. So let's start looking at the habitat itself. So you can see the guests can go through this little path over here. And then we have the reindeer. Nice. There's actually a little hut, and I think I found something about this in the description. Um... I made the reindeer habitat. My inspiration for them was the folk living in northern Scandinavia called Summer. Each village lives and survives on the reindeer and they take the herds over mountains and find fresh grass for them. I made a typical hut used by the summer. Yeah, that's this one. That's really cool. So if, you, uh, if you're from Scandinavia, you might uh, recognize this. Or maybe you, uh, yeah, you have your own reindeer herd. Let me know down in the comments. Oh, there's another bridge here. I like that. They actually use it. It looks quite uncomfortable when they use it, but uh, it works. Foliage work is really nice along the path. You can see that they really have a lot of space. So this is the entire habitat. So that's uh, that's more than enough for, uh, for our reindeer, I think. And this path continues yeah, just along this side. I think this is a beautiful place. If you can just walk around here, probably take you like a few minutes and you will have reindeer all yeah all around it's a nice place right next to the reindeer habitat there is also a polar habitat and in the description it says it was quite a challenge to make sure that the polar bears have enough transversible area and that's always a uh, a struggle with uh, with the polar bears they need a lot of land area and they also need a lot of water area and uh, there was actually a really creative way of, uh, of fixing this so this is a two layer habitat so the polar bears can walk underneath it and they can also walk right on top of it. So just to make sure that the polar bears have enough transversible area. There's also a little cave down here. And you can see there's already a polar bear in there. Which is a, a nice little shelter space for the animals. And a lot of water area on this side. And of course there's another water section on the other side. But we will, we will see that once we get to that area i just want to quickly go inside this building just to see what uh what is in here i guess this is a, um, a little viewing area i'm happy to see that the guests can actually get in here yes this is nice i like this not sure what this means inuksuk may it might be the name of the uh of the polar bear by the way i see some male age 15 yeah probably so these are uh, probably the names of the polar bears oh you have a really nice view on the animals from here that's nice. And let's see. If we take a look at the other side. Little education about the polar bears over there. And we can go down. 
another viewing spot. Oh, we can uh, go down even more. Let's see. Is this like the polar bear cave, maybe? Polar bear. Nice. I think this goes underneath the polar bear habitat. You will have some education on the left. It says polar bears quite often. And then we go up again. Let's see. Let's see. Yeah, nice. Okay, now we end up in this side of the zoo again. I like it. Really creative. They uh, like the double layers. The pathing underneath the habitat is really cool. A little viewing area. And I really like the huts and the reindeer habitat. They look really realistic. I like it. The fencing is really good. So, uh, yeah, well done. Well done, Fane. And let's continue to the next area. And the next area was made by Elle, if I pronounce that correctly. I, I think I do. It's uh, someone from South Africa. And um, I based the build on the typical look of a safari lodge that you would find in a nature reserve here in South Africa. I'm very proud of the building itself. I think it's the best build I've done so far. And the name of the lodge, Ingululu, Ingule, I don't know, <laughs> means cheetah in Zulu. One of the 11 native languages in South Africa. That's interesting. Uh, that was a short description, by the way, from uh, from uh, the creator of this habitat. So let's take a look at the build itself. And I already recognize the safari lodge over here. I love the combination of the logs and then the South African thatch roof. It's really cool. The uh, Over here we have some animals. Yeah, we have the spring buck right over here. We have some custom fencing. Really nice. I like that. People know that by now. I always love costume fencing. Uh, the walls. Oh, I like that. The colors. Some plaster with some wooden planks. That looks nice. Forge is really well done. Oh, and I like this. This is a really good build. I have to admit. It's simple. It's small. But there's a lot of uh, like creative things in here. The little shelters over here. I like that. Uh... Yeah, using a rock so we don't see the ugly thing over here. <laughs> That's cool. Nicely done. I like the foliage work in this one. Because this is a uh, a temperate zoo. And uh, you would actually... S I, in my opinion, you would actually see some foliage like this. So they did keep that in mind. I like that. We have a lot of springbok going around over here. And a little water area on the side. Foliage work. All well done all around. A little staff section over here. And let's go inside of the safari lodge. Because I also see some shops over here. Really nice. Like the little details on the floor. Makes it look a little bit more interesting. And then a terrace. Oh, I always love uh, a little terrace. I hope people will use this. Because you have a really great view over here. I like that. If you would have something like this in a zoo. I would sit here like... Four hours straight. Yeah. And, um, what which animal? I thought I read something about a cheetah. Yeah, there's a cheetah habitat here. How cool is that? Somehow, I didn't really see any good cheetah habitats in a zoo yet. Always, when I visit the zoo, there's always like a chain link fence and a lot of area for them to run around. But nothing that would look this beautiful. And you will have a terrace right next to it. Um... Uh, but yeah, over here we have the uh, we have the actual cheetahs. Oh, there are, there's a cheetah hydra over here. I think there are three of them, probably, in this habitat. The rock work, I like it. I really like it. It's really cool to see how uh, people come up with different kind of rock work. I think people by now might recognize something that I created, and. Um, for example, the Icelandic zoo that we did previously on the channel. The rock work over there is completely different from this one. But I, I really like how the, the rocks are stacked. The little water section over here. Really beautiful habitat. The little pride rock over here for the cheetah. That would be cool if they would use that. And I think this is like a uh, little drinking spot. I guess. I hope they can use it really looks nice and clean so that's uh that's well done then on the side we have a little dry moat that's cool so for the safety otherwise the cheetah would be able to escape to jump over it 
But with this little dry mode, they will fall down and then uh, people can pick them up and put them back in their habitat. That's uh, <laughs> that's what would happen. Another custom fence. Really cool combination of the barriers that I see over here. That's nice. I like this. So well done, Ella. I, I, I have to say, I really like this section of the zoo. It's really cool that you will have like two Africa sections right next to each other but on the other hand we wanted to embrace the randomness in this project so we have a cheetah and a springbok right next to uh, a little uh, snowy area in this zoo and that's uh, that's why it's a community zoo people could just build whatever they want and uh, but in the end it had to be a finished project and uh, yeah I'm, so far i really really like it but let's continue with the next area so the next area is done by Renate. I'm uh, just taking a look at a little description, but it's in Dutch, so I'm going to translate it uh, for you guys. I wanted to make a habitat with different viewing points on different levels, uh, so on different heights. While building this, I got inspired by the giraffe habitat that was on the side by, made by Citroen Vert, so she wanted to... Uh, implement this style of building into this habitat. So this build contains a zebra habitat and uh, apparently it was quite a challenge to put the zebras in their own dedicated habitat because normally you would only put them in like a little mixed section of the uh, of the zoo. Uh, she tried to implement all the zebra patterns all around the, uh, the habitat. You can already see that in the building and uh, I think I saw something right over there in the tunnel but uh, yeah let's take a look at uh, this beautiful little section let's start with the building i like it i like the shape and i like that it's like on top of the rocks let's go inside quickly another zebra pattern over here oh i i can already see it yeah but anyway we have uh we have some shops over here oh i love the plants i like that you would actually see this why do I never come up with this kind of stuff? I always get a lot of inspiration from uh, from these kind of builds. From basically all of your builds. We have some education here about the zebra. You can see uh, all the patterns all over the building. And then over here, a beautiful viewing spot. I can already see the animals on the back right over there. Really cool. So let's go outside. I like the tunnel. I like the thatch roof. I can already see that. The roof over here is also nice. I can see that the uh, the inspiration got from the uh, from this little shelter building. I can see the pattern. I can see it. Uh, this is the other exit, and we can continue along this tunnel. You will have a perfect view on the animals while you walk down here. I can see some zebras over here. Nice. Look at this. I love these shelters. Can they use this? That would be nice. I'm not sure if they can use this. That would be perfect though. I tried to implement something like this. But you would only have it with uh, giraffes that they can use it. Let's take a top view. Oh, there's another viewing area over here. That's nice. Let's see, let's see. I think these are costume. Let's see, 16... Yeah, these are custom. Picnic canopy. And then... Ah, these are combined. Ah, okay. Because I didn't recognize the pieces. I didn't recognize the uh, the locks that were used for this. But we have another uh, viewing spot right over here. I can see what she was talking about in the description. So different levels of viewing. So this is a... Uh, a... Uh, like a lower viewing section and then you have an upper viewing section over here and then this tunnel is like i don't know medium i can see another viewing spot over here so there's a lot of viewing areas for the uh, for the guests that's nice i like that actually some guests in the zoo i limited it to like 500 because i didn't want to kill the frame rate while doing this tour and i didn't want to pause it because uh, there is quite a lot of pieces in this zoo, I have to admit. But my computer is uh, is able to handle this. That's uh, that's nice. There's a lot going on in this uh, in this little section. We have some toilets. I can see that. Um, another viewing spot. The African huts over here. I like that. That's really cool. 
But overall, I really like this habitat. It's a uh, really cool sunshades. I like those. Um, I would put them on a the workshop if I were you. If the uh, if the animals would actually able to to use it when you uh, when you raise the, uh, the the feeding stuff like this, they are filled. So I don't know. They might be able to use it. I didn't see it yet. But I like it. Really creative and uh, well done to Renate. And the next area was done by Maiva. Uh, the short description. My animal was a snow leopard and I shared the polar bears with a pain. So this is the shared polar bear habitat that we uh, that we already saw on that side. Uh, because the polar bears need a lot of space. There was not a lot of space left for the guests. Um, but I tried to make it look like a winter wonderland with a lot of lights. Oh, we have to check it out by night, of course. Uh, I also tried to bring some Christmas vibes to the seating area. I'm most proud of my underwater viewing area for the polar bears. For me, it was something new to build. And at that time, I think it came out really well. So uh, let's uh, let's check it out. Let's see. I can already see the underwater viewing. That's nice. Are the polar bears diving yet? I don't think so. I don't think there are like diving animations for the polar bears yet. Uh, but I like it. It's really well done. The polar bears on top of it. Little viewing spot over there. I still love that bridge. That's really creative. Um, yeah, with the polar bears, they don't like foliage. So you have to be creative with some uh, rocks and some terrain work. If the polar bears are like on top of that spot and you will, uh, you will walk down here, you will have a really cool view. You can see that. You can still see the animals. That's really nice. So the guest will enter this section with this path. I've never seen anyone using this path, but I really like it in this uh, in this atmosphere. Then we have the little uh, I don't know. Oh, there's some shops in here. Really cool. Some shelter space for the guests. Also uh, necessary. You can see the uh, the guests are actually cold. So there must be some coolers here and there. Some people waving at me. Very nice. Like the building. And uh, we had to check it out by night. Because they were telling us. That it was like a little. Christmas wonderland. Oh I can see it. I thought it was part of the uh, of the actual path thing. But you can see that. Uh, there are a lot of light bulbs in here. And as you might know. I love the light bulbs in a Christmas atmosphere. The polar bears light up. And uh, oh that's cool. I like this. I can see myself sitting here having a hot chocolate with uh, with some rum and uh, enjoy the view on the animals. Let's switch it back to, uh, to daytime and we should have some snow leopards here. But let's see if we can find them. Not sure where they are. But anyway, the habitat itself. Some really cool rock work. I guess the uh, the snow leopards don't like foliage as well. I actually never build a habitat for them, so uh, that's a that's a animal that we need to do in the in the next zoo that we create together with the polar bears. I know. Um, oh, there is one over there. They're quite small, these animals, aren't they? Yeah, there they are. Oh, there's a little uh, shelter space right over here, little cave section, and uh, over here they can sleep. That's nice. I like the rock work on this one. So the combination of the snow and the uh, and the normal rocks. A little water section right over there. I can see that this area is a little bit smaller than the uh, than the other ones. But I made some really big ones and uh, some some smaller ones. I know it's uh, it was a little bit unfair sometimes, but I'm sorry about that. So really well done, Maiva. I like it. It's uh, like the little Christmas atmosphere. You know I like that. And uh, yeah, the combination of the two habitats, cool. And uh, it's it's difficult to make something look interesting for the polar bears because they don't have a lot of foliage and stuff like that. So if you want to keep that in mind, like the animal welfare, it's really difficult. But you did a great job, so well done. And let's switch to the next one. So the next build was done by Dan Creates. If you don't know Dan Creates, make sure you check him out on YouTube. He makes some awesome stuff. And of course, this is no exception. Uh, I will quickly read the description that I got. Hey, I decided to theme my area about the world of Avatar. And I'm overall happy about how the build came out. 
It took a lot of tests uh, so I could get the build right the first time and it came out exactly how I imagined it. I added a white rhino mostly because of the only tropical animal I was offered to build. <laughs> uh, but I made their habitat quite complex and the various levels and lots of viewing. Mostly I'm very happy about the floating islands. They took a lot of effort to get right and I think they resemble the islands from the movies quite well. Okay, so let's take a look at that. I love this. Of course, you will never see something like this in a zoo, but that's that's why it's a game. You can build anything you want. And um, I have to admit, I didn't see Avatar. So I might not be uh, the rest or the best person to, uh, to give a little tour around this section. Um, but of course, I can give my opinion about it and it looks wonderful. I love the foliage. The rock work is really cool. The waterfalls. What I really like is that they put some uh, plaster pieces underneath. So uh, the water looks a little bit more tropical and a little bit more uh, blue and vibrant. I like that. And I also saw some animals. There you go. So we have some rhinos uh, right over there. Uh, the Indian rhinoceros. And let's take a look. I think this is a viewing area. Yeah, this is cool. This is what I was talking about. This guy always creates some awesome stuff. And uh, yeah, this, this habitat... I love this. I am. Um, I'm gonna use this as an inspiration, probably. I love the different like levels over here with the with the wood. I don't think the rhinos really fit in here, but yeah, as I told you, uh, we assigned the animals to the people, and I think Dan already decided on what he wanted to build, and then he put the animals in. And uh, that's what a lot of content creators do. I usually. You know, don't really think about the animals. I just want to build something uh, something nice. Of course, there's a lot of people that do. Keep it in mind. But uh, yeah, some people work like this. The foliage here is amazing. The foliage work on the trees is amazing. I love the mist effects. It's, uh, it's really, really cool. I might be wrong, but I think there is also a, a speed build on this, on, this, uh, on this channel. So if you want to make sure you... Uh, or if you want to know how this was built, you uh, make sure you check that one out. And I'm checking the backside because I was afraid that these animals didn't have a lot of space. But uh, you can see there is a uh, there is enough space. There's actually pathing right here. Oh, this is the uh, the staff area, I guess. Yeah, okay. Not much to see here on the back, but the guests can still uh, go over here and see the uh, the beautiful animals. So let's take a quick look at the backside because i i thought this was just a, a huge building but as you can see there's a a little scenery going on here that's really cool i don't think there are animals in here i don't think so this would be really cool if you would have some uh, some birds or something like that in the game that they uh, that could use this really nice i love the atmosphere this must have taken loads of time to uh, to create this so overall, Dan, really well done. It's uh, it's a lovely little area. I love the foliage. Love the uh, it. It looks finished, as you can see. There's a lot of details in here. It's a really creative build. I've never seen anything like this. So well done. And uh, let's continue with uh, the next area. So the next area was made by Wiser, and again a wonderful content creator. If you uh, if you haven't seen him yet, I will put some links down in the description if I don't forget. So there will be a link to uh, Dan and to Wiser, uh, which contributed to this zoo. Again, the description is in Dutch, but I will give you a short summary of it. Um, so this habitat was inspired and made for the um, the African elephant. So the biggest challenge was to create a habitat that looked like a african elephant from the top so that's why i uh, gave you a little top view over here you can see the little tusks over here i think this <laughs> at least i think that uh, i got the right view so you have the ears the eyes and uh, it really looks cool i love the building uh, there is some indoor some outdoor area there's actually a, a little hotel in here so let's uh, start looking at uh, this next section so the first thing i'm gonna check out is this little area over here because I like this I think this was inspired by an actual zoo I think I did see some pictures so uh, you would be able to sit down here and the animals are actually on top of you that's uh, probably a really weird experience because these animals are huge so we'll have some uh, little shops over here uh, the reception so I guess this is the hotel 
Um, do not disturb, so we won't do that. This is probably supposed to be like an exhibit, something like that. So the shop over here, do not disturb, do not disturb, so we won't do that. Um, lovely little water section right there. Oh, and when we enter this door, that's nice. We have a hotel room. <laughs> that's cool. So we have a bed. Oh, I love this. We have the bathroom over here. We, we can take a shower. Oh, um, I know the camera work is always, uh, it's always a bit challenging on the indoor section. Oh, that's nice. That's really cool. So you have an underwater area over here for the elephants. So while you're sleeping, you might have an elephant banging on your window. That's cool. Well done, well done. I love these ideas. So the description also said that the habitat itself was, is quite simple. Uh, more like uh, 60s, 670s that you will uh, see that in a zoo. And uh, yeah, you can see that there's not much going on. We have a, a little water area. And let's take a look at the indoor section of this habitat. There should be a mud bath somewhere. I need to uh, check that out. Let's see, let's see. Yeah, quite simple structure over here. They can separate the animals. You would always see that in a zoo. This is where, they, uh, the, where the food comes from. I can see that. There's some watermelons lying around. Some staff area over here. I love this little uh, detail over here. Some uh, bananas that they uh, they can eat. But the building itself is really, uh, really cool. I love it. I love the building style on this one. Really simple, but really clean. And uh, realistic. That's uh, I always enjoy those realistic builds. So over here, this was the part that he was talking about in the description. So you will have a visible area of the, uh, of the habitat, which is on this side. And then on the other side, you will have a non-visible area for the guests. And over here, we have a mud bath for them. That's cool. So there's actually uh, some mud bath uh, or like the mud thingies. Enrichment items on the, on the bottom over here. They changed the color right over there. You can see that. And uh, some simple rocks, not a lot of foliage, but they would eat anything anyway. So yeah, I like it. I like it. Well done to Wiser. And right next to it, we have this beautiful Zoofluencer logo uh, area. I don't know what, what's it called. I'm not sure if guests can use it. But basically, this was like a little empty space. And Wiser created the, our beautiful logo over here. And uh, yeah, I love it. I really love it. This was all made by... By art shapes, it's it's incredible. The piece count on this, I don't even want to know it, but it's uh, it's really well done. I love it. Thank you so much for that. And let's continue with the next area, which was done by Mr. Feeny Pops. And Mr. Feeny Pops is uh, was also the manager of this project. So huge thank you for setting this up, for arranging everything. I forgot that in the beginning of the video. I'm sorry about that. But uh, if people made it. Until this far into the video, Mr. Feeny Pops was the was the guy behind this. So, uh, yeah, well done, well done. Of course, he also made a little description. Well, it wasn't a little description, so I'm gonna make it a little bit shorter. On <laughs> this, try to make it a little bit shorter. Um, just try to make an enclosure without fences or obvious barriers for the Western chimpanzees, as I love photo photography and sometimes struggle in some zoos to get photos without glass, the way or the wire fence. Oh yeah, I can imagine. I always have that when you try to make like pictures in a, in a zoo or from the animals, you have to stick your camera through the fence or, or something like that. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I can, uh, I feel your pain there. Uh, I, I also wanted to try to incorporate some education in the enclosure. I made one end to a deforestation scene. So uh, guests are busy taking photos and looking at the wonderful animals. It suddenly becomes a desolate wasteland. A reminder that they are under a threat. From deforestation i love that it's really cool i don't think um, you would see anything like this in a uh, in a zoo and yeah it's it's good to make people aware of what's happening of course it's uh, it's horrible if you uh, yeah, if you look at like the amazon and stuff like that i always hate to see that so it's good to people or to educate people about that i love that the monorail goes right through this river we have all the animals here i think like this habitat makes the monorail ride definitely worth it. A lot of animals here. And then we have like the little deforestation area. 
you can see the animals don't mind so they will still use this and i think this one blocks basically the transversal area otherwise the animals will be able to escape from this side i love the foliage work it's really cool it really looks like a, a little tropical forest and i think there is another viewing area right over here yeah there it is there's still some glass but glass is always okay to take some pictures right as long as it's clean sometimes you would see it in a zoo that it hasn't been clean for years uh, so you won't be able to uh, to make any good pictures but the view on this one look at that that's amazing really is amazing see the animals jumping around the waterfall in the back there's even some little foliage on the indoor area i like this well done, Mr. Vini Pops. I love, I always love tropical vibes, you know that. People know what I like, so that's why they, uh, why they built this, right? <laughs> uh, oh yeah, I, again, the, uh, the monorail goes right through it. And uh, it, it fits in well with the area from then. You can see that. I like that. Again, well done, Mr. Vini Pops. And thank you for, uh, for arranging this beautiful community zoo and let's continue with the next area and the next area was on by Feeny Pops you can see Mr. Feeny Pops and Feeny Pops right next to each other again Feeny Pops wonderful moderator in our uh, little community she was there since the very beginning I think uh, so I'm happy to see that she uh, yeah that she did take part into this project so the description she gave me again a very long one so I'm gonna make it uh, <laughs> a little bit shorter um, so for the community build, I was given the Okapi as my animal. I had zero idea what I wanted to do, but eventually decided to pair up with another animal in the game that was from the same area. The gorilla, they both come from Congo in Africa, so the Congo house was born. I had a small area of the zoo, so settled on two habitats rather than any buildings and shops. Okay, let's, uh, let's take a look at that. I can already see the gorillas. There you go. Huge animals. Oh, there's actually a shelter here. That's cool. So we have an indoor section and an outdoor section. And you will have a perfect view on them on the inside. Okay, we will have to take a look at the inside of the building. Uh, but first, let's take a look at the outdoor area. Some climbing structure over here. I love the rope pieces. That's cool. Foliage again. Spot on. People are really good in, in foliage in this game. I don't know what's what's happening. <laughs> uh, but uh, well done, Mr. or Mrs. Feeny Pops in this case. Or Feeny Pops, the, uh, the original one. I can only see one gorilla for now. A foraging box. And right next to it, you will have another viewing spot. I like that. So the animals are eating. And you can uh, you can take a look at the, uh, at the animals. I do think that this habitat is... Uh, Probably like just big enough for the uh, for the gorillas. Let's uh, let's check that. It looks kind of small, but I was also in the description because she uh, she had quite a small area. Oh, it's uh, it's more than big enough. That's cool. I like that. Just a little uh, quick overview of this habitat. As you can see, the animals would use this, and then you will have a uh, a perfect view on them. Then the Congo house that was born. Let's see. Yeah, you can just go inside and have a uh, have a good view on the animals. If they would be sleeping here, you might need like two way or one way glass over here for the for the privacy of the animals. I don't think they uh, they would like that. Especially the okapi gets stressed quite quickly. I do remember that from uh, from Veluwe. So we had to make some uh, adjustments to that habitat. And then over here we have the Okapi habitat. Look at that. We have some beautiful animals in here. Again, beautiful foliage work. The terrain work is done well done. Like the if you would be here as a guest, you have a perfect view on the animals. And I uh, I really like that people thought about that. Some custom fencing along the side. But can you imagine walking down here and you can already see the animals? That's really cool. And I do think that the animals won't get stressed from the amount of people that will walk here. Because they only see rocks. So that's uh, that's cool. I like that. 
another viewing spot right over there and let's take a little top view of this area indeed this was a uh, this was a smaller area i have to admit i'm not really good at dividing stuff that's uh, maybe <laughs> maybe i have to learn uh, something about that but yeah well done well done feeny pops and thank you so much for uh, for participating in this project and the next area was built by Marie B. If you don't know Marie B, she uh, created the logo and uh, basically anything that you would see uh, on the channel when it comes down to uh, yeah, stuff like that. You know, banners, logos, all the good stuff, all done by Marie B. So I was really curious to see what she, uh, what she could come up with. And uh, let's take a look at the description. So let's see. It's no secret I love dogs. So when I spotted or oh, when the spotted hyena popped up. As one of my go-to animals, I knew right away I just had to go for them. I started thinking what would fit them best and a few shots from the Lion King came to mind. I didn't want to build a replica or anything, but I really felt inspired by the Rock's Cave Quarry feeling. Okay, let's uh, let's gonna take a look at that. So the quarry, oh, I, I think I know by now what she what she means. You know the, the scene uh, where everyone cried? That Mufasa would uh, would fall down. I think that's it. I've seen some people trying to recreate that, but this is uh, this looks much more interesting than the uh, than the actual image. I like it. A lot of rock work on the sides to so really uh, go into a new area. The little bridge over here, really cool. And then we also have to take a look at the uh, at the big building. Well, let's take a look at the uh, the habitat first. Let's see, let's see. Let's uh, let's walk down the bridge. You can see a hyena over there. Pretty cool. People running around to spot the animals. Nice, nice. Let's see. I can see some indoor viewing as well so this is the indoor section for the animals which also uh, is a shelter space for them and then we go right into the building really cool i love the foliage work i love the little planters over here a lot of details into this one the glass everywhere so you will have a good look at the animals and let's go upstairs and then another viewing area. Cool, cool. I like it. I love that she used the uh, the gum trees. I don't I don't ever know how to implement that in a build, but they uh, they look really good in uh, this section. Oh, these are actually dingoes over here. That's cool. That makes sense actually. <laughs> so on one side we have the hyena, and on one side we have the dingo, and this uh, this tree would fit in perfectly uh, for them. Let's uh, let's go up a little bit. There's another seating area right over here. You can sit here, have your lunch, or you can buy something over here. You can buy a burger or an ice cream. You can do whatever you want. A gulpy soda, and then uh, walk around this beautiful zoo. Look at that. A little top view of this habitat. Maribi, well done. I have to admit, I didn't expect anything else from you. So, <laughs> well done. And uh, let's continue with the next one, which was done by Okie Doki number four. Um, the description, I built a African primate mountain containing all African primates, except for the chimpanzees. I made a walkway system with African huts because of how the path system works. Uh, besides that, I made a lot of climbing frames. Most of them were built with the Australian logs. I already did see that. I love that. Um, I also built a shelter for the gorilla inside of the mountain with a viewing window for the guests. The guests can see the gorillas from above uh, because of the viewing window. That sounds cool. I also made two little African huts connected with a viewing window down below by the lemur habitat. So let's see what we have here. So this looks like a little lemur island. With a really cool climbing structure. I like this one. It looks like a huge mess. And that's what you always see in a uh, in a zoo. 
Also, uh, this habitat is not that big. And again, lemurs don't really need a lot of space. And I think people always end up making things a little bit too big for these animals. And uh, yeah, great. Well done. I love that it separates different habitats over here. But let's continue with the next one. And uh, as the description said, they used a lot of Australian logs. And that was uh, really something that, you know, popped up for me. Because i never seen any climbing structures like this. So it was interesting to see if the animals would actually use it. It looks a little bit buggy <laughs> to me with the pallets. But I love the, I love the look of it. Uh, <laughs> it. It seems not to go very well. Oh, there you go. Oh, not yet. Well, anyway, it looks great. And uh, that's what uh, that's what it's all about. I do see some arches over there. Um, yeah, the pathing system, of course, to make something cool with that. It's a struggle, I can imagine. If you want to make like a rope bridge, it's basically impossible to, uh, to do that. So that's why we are uh, asking for some null pathing. So you can build anything you want. And then guests can, uh, can walk right over it. Uh, next one. This does say chimpanzee, but I don't see any chimpanzees over here. Oh, there they are. I thought the description said except for the chimpanzees. But anyway, uh, again, the Australia logs. I love these. These are really cool. I really hope they can use it. That the animals would... Uh, would lay down on these little platforms and if you are a guest in the zoo you will you know, walk right up there and have a perfect view on the animals. I love that. That's really cool. The entire rock work on this area is incredible. I, I like the structures. The little details like this, like the sunshade. They, uh, they look good. It's like a completely different atmosphere in this area. Well done. Again, another climbing frame. The mandrills. Um, it's, I have to admit, I'm impressed by this one. The, on the rock work. I think I checked this one out. It's 1,992 pieces of rock in this, uh, in this section. So that's cool. I like that. And I think they were also talking about... A shelter space in the rocks for the gorillas. But I need to find that one. Oh, I think it's over here. Oh, that's cool. I've never seen anyone using this except for, uh, yeah, my myself. While I was uh, building Monkey Island, one of the very first things I did is like making a shelter space up on the rocks. And I guess, yeah, there's a window over here. Nice. So the guests can look down while the animals are sleeping. It's really cool. Yeah, I was a little bit bugged over there. I'm sorry about that. And then on the other side is the next section already. So uh, first off, okie dokie. Really well done. I love it. The rock work, the climbing frames. It's really creative. And uh, something I haven't seen before. So uh, yep, well done, okie dokie. And let's continue with the next one, which was built by Planet Blueberry. The description for the community zoo, I created the Bornean orangutan habitat. It was my very first uh, time working with these amazing animals. And, and I had a lot of fun building the habitat. That's good. I'm already happy with the, <laughs> with the description. I wanted the guests to be able to see the animals most of the time. So I decided to go for a wooden tunnel that guests would go through in order to see uh, the other parts of the habitat. Even though my initial inspiration was completely different, I really love what I did for the orangutans. And my favorite part of the build was creating the tunnel. Let's see. Right next to the Zoofluenza logo. So that's already uh, a great spot. And let's take a look. I like the little bridge over here. And it's also cool that, you know, people... The one that created this area was uh, someone else. And... Uh, but still, you will have two monkeys like Rex right next to each other. I like that. You already see the orangutans walking around. Beautiful climbing frame. I love the little... Uh, again, this is a, a bit bigger than the other one. Like on the other side. What a place for the animals to sleep. Love the combination of the leaves and the uh, attached thing. We have a little bridge. 
There's a lot of space for these animals. I like that. A lot of trees. Beautiful foliage. The rock work is really well done on this side. It's uh We have a lot of uh, very great or like very good builders in our community. I'm always amazed by that. If you have seen the uh for example the Christmas competition, again those those builds were amazing. It's it's incredible. And this project is uh, is just the same. And I think I first saw the new water effects in this zoo. And I'm really impressed by it, like the wild water. So you have like still water and the, uh, well, I don't know, standing water, something like that. But the little effect on this one, it looks so good. It looks so much better with the new update. And uh, it really complements this, uh, this habitat. So the tunnel, I think I had something like this in mind once. As you might know, I love like wooden modern structures. And this is uh, exactly what that is. You have a nice little tunnel for the guests. They can walk around here. You want to have a perfect view on the animals. That's nice. I don't think the animals can come up close. That's good. Otherwise, they would stick their hands through the fence. Or maybe on this side. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if that's really safe. Uh, normally, the animals would, uh, would fit through, I guess. But it's really cool if you would be able to uh, to sit down here. Have a look at the animals crossing this wooden bridge. And uh, continue along in this uh, in this tunnel. So a little top view of this habitat. I think people will, uh, will get a lot of inspiration from this one. I love the tunnel. I love the wooden structures. And uh, it's just a lovely a little habitat. So well done. Planet Blueberry. I like it. I like it. And then it's time for the very, very last one. But last but not least, this one was made by Mrs. Zoofluencer herself. Yes, she uh, she also took part in the uh, in this project. And I have to admit, her build was one of the biggest inspirations I got for uh, Borealis Zoo. So uh, let's take a look at this habitat. She didn't give me a description. She thought I would be able to, uh, <laughs> to make it myself. Uh, but I know this uh, habitat is supposed to be a little valley with the timber wolves in there and uh, we will take a look at that and on the side we will have a beautiful little christmas market and uh, yeah these buildings that she created was my biggest inspiration for borealis zoo to create like a christmas market a little uh, market stands that we created she wanted to make something that was useful and of course i only made a useless prop in the zoo uh, but these actually contain some uh, some shops over here i love that she created some custom windows and some custom roofs um also i have to tell you miss influencer didn't put as much time in the game as i did i think she only played the uh, planet zoo for like i don't know 20 30 hours max this was one of her very first builds uh, normally she would put down like a fence and then a tree in the middle and and that would be it so i was really impressed by uh, by what she accomplished uh, keeping in mind the hours that she uh, that you put in a game because when we go down here i was uh i was really impressed by the foliage work that you would see in uh, this little area let's go down and uh she wanted to create like a forest area on one side for the uh, for the wolves and there they are and then we have a beautiful little river but look at that there's foliage work everywhere there are flowers everywhere the little moss things you have a wooden log you can see the uh, the animals enjoy it. They are swimming. But this is really cool. I would never come up with uh, with something like that to make use of the uh, of the foliage like this. I always work like terrain work or work with terrain work instead of the the foliage. But you don't have to do anything with the terrain if you do if you do it like this. So that's uh, that's really cool. And then on this side you will have a shelter space for the animals. You have a little cave. And I think there was supposed to be a barrier here, but I'm not really sure. But this is another viewing spot for the guests. So you can sit down here and have a look at these animals. It's a beautiful spot, right? I like it. I like it a lot. So we'll have a path thing going up there. I think it ends up in one of the, uh, one of the wooden structures over here. But yeah, as I told you, a big inspiration for me for Borealis Zoo, like the centerpiece with the uh, with the Christmas tree, and then the little huts right next to it. 
uh, there's another viewing spot right over there and then of course you have a huge bridge crossing the habitat i don't think it's super realistic but it looks beautiful and that's what the uh, yeah that was what she was going for just a little uh, top view of the final habitat of this uh, of this build and uh, yeah well done to mrs zoofluencer so that was it the uh, the little tour of the very first zoofluencer community zoo i really hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did make sure you hit the like button if you want to make or be part in the uh, next community zoo make sure you join the discord channel and um, yeah we will probably do something like this again next year and uh, if you haven't subscribed yet Make sure you do so you won't miss out on anything new. And I will speak to you guys in the next one. Goodbye.